Welcome to Corfu! We spent three days exploring the old town of Corfu and found that it was just enough time to see all of the enchanting historical places that this city has to offer. So let's talk about all of the things that we did and during our three days in Corfu. And I think this is a great itinerary that maybe you can follow if you want to as well. We based ourselves at Mon Repos Palace, which is located on Garitza Bay, just on the tip there, just a little bit outside of Old Town. It's one kilometer outside of the Old Town, and it's a beautiful walk along the promenade to get there. But we found it was the perfect place to be because it is away from the hustle and bustle, and this adults-only retreat was perfect for relaxing after sightseeing. We've arrived at Mon Repos Palace here in Corfu. It's about a five-minute drive from the airport, 15-minute walk to downtown. We're right on the sea. And uh, we got a little welcome drink. It had a great room with great air conditioning, which was really important in the height of summer. It had its own pool, and it was right across the street from some beautiful access to the ocean. The restaurant was fantastic, and we had a delicious buffet breakfast. There was outside dining, and they had nightly entertainment. For 700 euro for three nights, we found this to be a great deal for the high season in Greece. Especially for a five-star adults only resort. So obviously a lot more economical places you can stay, but just be aware that in high season, you're gonna be paying a premium. feeling overwhelmed when I've arrived in a new town, I get on a hop on, hop off bus. We got a ticket for 24 hours for 19 euro, and we're gonna go and do a little bit of sightseeing and relaxing. I found in Corfu town that taxis and any other transportation was quite expensive. So the best way to get around when you're in old town is get the hop on, hop off bus. All right, we're off, we're on the hop on, hop off bus. Here, a little tour around Corfu, give us a good lay of the land. And it's unlimited. We could just get off and then get right back on after we did some sightseeing. So the first place that we went to is the most popular stop on the entire route. And we recommend going first thing in the morning and that is the Old Fort. We have come into the Old Fort and this dates back to the 15th century. It was controlled by the Venetians who were guarding against the Byzantines and the Ottoman Empire. So uh, there was a moat created all around here that separated the fort from Corfu, and this was the stronghold. So now we are going to go up there. So it is quite hot here in Corfu. We're heading up to the lighthouse for a great view over the city. Make sure you drink lots of water, stay hydrated. Coming up to the old fort gives you one of the best views of the city. It costs uh, six euro to get in and it takes about 10 minutes to walk to the top and it really is worth it. Bring some water and wear a good pair of walking shoes because it's quite uneven and rocky but there are railings to hang on. I came up in flip flops if you want, it's not a problem but if you have troubles I would definitely wear some good shoes. And then look at this view. Cruise ships are in. Corfu is a popular cruise destination in the Onian Islands. So it's always good to get out early in the morning before they get in. I clearly didn't follow my own advice, but this fort is big enough that you don't feel like there's a big crowd or anything. You really can see the Venetian influence here, whereas other Greek islands have the whitewashed buildings with the blue domes. This is very much a feel of Venice with the pastel colors. It's really lovely to come and see this town. We're standing here on the old fort, uh, which was actually fortified by the Venetians between the 14th century and the 18th century. And you can see it's just been built upon and built upon, and you can really see exactly what their influence was here and why this was such a strategic area in order to build a fort. 
I'd also suggest to go to the other side of the fort. You get amazing views over the sea. You can go in and check out, there's a church there as well that you can go inside and learn a little bit about the history. Located on the old fort grounds is the Church of St. George. It was constructed by the British and was a Christian church at one time. But when Greece gained control of their land again, it became an Orthodox church. And it is still used a couple times a year today. There's also a cafe inside if you want to just stop and have a rest and a drink while you're waiting or just to cool down a little bit. So when you're walking back down, make sure you hang onto the handrails. I saw more than one person fall and slip right flat on their bum on the way down. So hang on to them, it's slippery. Located right across the street from the old fort is the Esplanade. So this square is the biggest public square in Greece and all of the Balkans. I was a little confused because I had read it was the largest square in Europe and I was like, where is this square? But then I found out it's a big green space. It's almost like a huge soccer field or something yeah. like that. So it's got this green space and then you go across to the promenade. This promenade is lined with restaurants and cafes and it's a great place to have a Greek coffee mm. before you move on to the next area. Or an apparel spritz if that's what you're looking for. Something we found about the major sites of the old town Corfu is that it's very walkable and easy to get from one place to another. As we continued along the Esplanade, we came upon the Royal Palace and the Museum of Asian Arts. The Palace of St. Michael George and the Corfu Museum of Ancient Art are two of the most popular things to do in Corfu. There are no photos allowed inside, but you must go in to learn about the history. This is a really popular museum, but it is just a beautiful structure in its own right. Yeah, it has a little garden out front and then you can go walk around the side in the back and there's a sculpture garden actually you can walk through and you get great views of the old fort from there. And as you walk around behind the Royal Palace, views just open up of the Ionian Sea, which is just absolutely magnificent. It has a great view of the Yacht Club as well, where people are swimming down below. The Yacht Club is one of the top beaches in Old Town Corfu, so you can make your way down there and have an apparel spritz. <laughs> you can do some swimming, and from up above, it's a great photograph. Something I really liked about the museum building itself are all of the pillars in front. So that's like the major Instagram spot. We had to wait for a lot of people doing their yeah flowy dress and hat uh, shots, but we eventually got Dave walking through and that was like, that's my prized shot, watching my baby walk. Yeah, I think you made me walk like <laughs> five or six times. I got my exercise, that's for sure. So from here, we actually hopped on our hop on, hop off bus and headed out to the new fort. What makes this city somewhat unique is that it has an old fort and a new fort, and both offer amazing views of the city. And there is the new fortress. We've come to the new fort located on the opposite side of town from the old fort, and I think it's actually a better view of the city, and it's five euro to come on up. So how old is the new fort exactly? Well, it's only about 20 years newer than the old fort. I think it was built in 1577, once again by the Venetians, and this was to stand guard against the Turks. There actually are quite a few little places where you can get some views, where they have some platforms. So if you go to the main area where everyone turns to, it feels like, oh, this is it. But as we explored more, we had other lookouts and it is beautiful. I really enjoyed the new fort more than the old fort, actually. Less people go there, for one thing, so it was less crowded. And you could actually go inside and walk along the rooms and uh, the ruins, and it really felt like it was still very much intact. It's pretty cool. There's some doors that you can go in to explore the other side, and I thought we were going to be going into some rooms and some barracks, but it's just a big, wide-open moat or something like that. So it's a big, like, wide-open space. <laughs> Now, in terms of space, it is a little bit smaller than the old fort. You'll do a little bit more uh, walking at the old fort than you do at the new fort. But you do actually get to go inside a bunch of the rooms and read a little bit about the history of this fort. Now, that was fun. The fact that it's a lot less crowded than the old fort makes it a lot more appealing. One thing I did really like about it is it stands guard over the port. So you get to see these incredible views over the port, completely different than getting them out to the Ionian Sea from the old fort. 
So I really enjoyed actually coming to the new fort and something I noticed is that they planted some trees here. I can only imagine what it was like without the trees because it's quite nice to have all of the green spaces, lots of shade. It was very comfortable to, to walk through and there's these open air tunnels inside and uh, it's really worth coming for five euro. And this is what I'm talking about, all the trees that they planted so you have some shade while you're doing some sightseeing here in the fort. Beautiful. So that's where we ended our day one because that was a lot of forts. So we made our way down back to our area for some dinner on the beach. Some nice relaxation right after exploring the town. Uh, we're at a cocktail bar here right across from our hotel, right on the sea. Perfect. And the famous windmills in the back. Beautiful place. Right across from Mom Repo's Palace is actually a wonderful restaurant and cocktail bar, which is called the Windmill Restaurant. I'm not going to try and pronounce it in Greek because that just wouldn't work. But it is situated right by a very famous windmill. And uh, we enjoyed a nice apparel spritz there, then went and had some dinner. Oh, it was just fantastic overlooking the Ionian Sea. I can see why Corfu Town is such a revered place to go to. It's a great place to base yourself and it gives you great views. And it was a perfect place to end off the evening. It's a great way to end the day. Look at this view. Being situated outside of Corfu, we decided to spend the day enjoying the sites that were around and attractions that were around our hotel. One of the top things to do in Corfu is to go to Mon Repo Park. And Dave, what is significant about this place? Well, Prince Philip was actually born here. So you can go, we're gonna go check out the museum and uh, see what treasures are inside. It is a fee to get in there to go in and look inside the actual palace and see where he lived. But uh, the architecture itself is really worth it. Just taking some photos outside and strolling around. I really loved it. It looks like it's seen some better days. Like it looked like the cafe was closed when we were there and there was a few things under construction. But it does look like it'll be probably coming back. Maybe it was hit by COVID or something like Maybe, that. Yeah. I'm not sure. It was really cool to see because it's quite a historic place. So I would say the gardens are nice and they are free to enter and it's cool kind of to see where Prince Philip was born. But I wouldn't make a special trip out here. If you do have the hop on hop off bus, you can hop off on here, check it out and get right back on. The Mon Repos Baths are a perfect place just to go and kick back and relax. It's like a private beach club. Make sure you come to Mon Repos for a cocktail and a beach chair. You go in there, there's no fee to enter as long as you order a drink or something to eat. It has its own private beach, so you can grab yourself a beach chair there, order some cocktails, sit around, relax. It has changing rooms, so you can come from wherever you are in Corfu town and come to spend a half a day or the day there. It really is just about chilling out. I thought it was going to be really crowded when we were there and there weren't that many people there. So it's really fantastic. And a lot of people, when they go to Greece, they want to have a little bit of beach time. So if you are only exploring old town Corfu, this is the place to do it. So the bus is 24 hours, so on day two, we're just using it as our taxi to get around town, which is really great because we don't have to walk anywhere now. If you take the hop on hop off bus, you can come on out to Kanoni, which is one of the most photographed places in all of Corfu. But one of the coolest things to do is to watch the planes land because the runway goes right beside the hotel and cafe here. And if you go down, there's a bridge down below where you can watch them go right overhead. You'll also find the Corfu sign out here. So there's quite a bit to do. Well, I found the Corfu sign and I'm kind of laughing because it's on a bend on a busy highway or busy road anyway, behind it telephone pole and there's Dave. Hi Dave! <laughs> kind of funny but there is the colorful Corfu sign. This restaurant is also one of the best places in Corfu for sunset and this is considered the modern capital of the island. It's really worth coming out to see. Right over there you can catch a boat to go out to Mouse Island which is that little island in the middle. It looks like a mouse from above so if you're flying into Corfu look below to see how it looks like a mouse. 
So this area isn't too far from the place that we stayed in Monrepo, so we hopped back on the hop on, hop off bus. Our ticket had expired by then, but we just showed them it and they let us on. <laughs> so we were, were lucky. They were pretty relaxed. It was high season. There were a lot of people on the bus, so we made it work and uh, went for dinner again near our place because there are wonderful restaurants all along the waterfront promenade. Ah, the winds have come in and it's so comfortable right now. I'm looking forward to eating on the beach. I think that the lighthouse is one of the top places for the locals to take in sunset anyway. And I think it's one of the most beautiful views of all of the city. I think a lot of people end up going out to Mouse Island or other hotels downtown, but this is gorgeous and everybody's swimming and you can just relax and watch the sun go down over the city. Sunset in Corfu. Well, you definitely want to do some shopping here in Corfu town. There's a lot of little alleyways where you can just go shopping the streets for hats and dresses and belts and purses. They've got it all. So our final day in Corfu was all about the walking. This was where we were really going to check out the old town and see all of the structures and do some shopping and just enjoy the vibe of the city. How do you like walking through these streets, Dave? I love it. You can tell it's just like, it's very Venetian, the way they're all narrow and staggered all over the place. It's pretty cool and busy. We started the morning just walking along the promenade and taking in all of the views of people fishing and all of the boats coming in. And then we walked into Old Town where we stopped and had a Greek coffee. One of the first things I do when I come to Greece is always have Greek coffee. It's so good. That's delicious. That'll wake you up. And even as you walk through the streets, you can see there's different kinds of streets. So there's a main shopping street with some more higher end brands and stuff like that, which is near the city hall, which is an impressive building unto itself, but a little bit more modern than say some of the other buildings. And if you're looking for some nice eating areas, you can come down by old city hall, lots of places and lots of choices. And then there are a lot of narrow alleyways that you just want to get lost in and get some ice cream or have a coffee or just stop and have a Greek salad. And it's really not that long really to get from one side of Corfu town to the other. You can wander through the streets, do some shopping because there's tons of shopping streets. Start at the old fort side and end up over at the harbor by the new fort. So it's something that you can really great to spend a morning doing when it's not too hot and wander around those streets. One thing you should keep an eye out for while you're wandering the streets is the Church of St. Spiridon. This is a church that was built in 1586 and it really sticks out in the cityscape of Old Corfu Town. When you're standing up on the new fort or the old fort, you can see this orange dome. Well, you actually want to go and find that church. You're going to want to go inside. You can't take any photos or video in there, but there's always someone in there guarding the remains of St. Spiridon. So it is something you want to actually check out when you're wandering those streets. There are quite a few churches in Old Corfu. So if you want to go and check them out, just pop in. You, you are allowed to go inside. Just be respectful and dress respectfully. One that is a standout is the Spilio Tisa Church. If you find yourself at the old port, once you walk back into the old town, this will be one of the first churches you see. It's a beautiful Orthodox church that dates back to 1577. And it has that pink hueish color that you see all throughout the Ionian Islands, much different than the blue dome church or the blue colored church that you find down in Santorini and Mykonos. I think that's what I love about this. It's such a contrast from the Greek islands that we all expect in the south. And I really love that this is the pink hues of the Venetian field. Yeah. So one of the last things that I recommend that you do 
is to end your day on a sunset boat cruise. We ended our day at the marina as we were catching a cruise over to Paxos and we got to spend the night overlooking the fort and doing a sunset cruise around the island. And there are sunset cruises that you can book from Old Corfu Town and this is a great way. You can have dinner cruises, sunset cruises. Just make sure you get out on the water because it's spectacular to see. Yeah, it really gives you that different view of the city and you just cannot go to Corfu without getting out on the water. So that's how we spent our three days in old Corfu town. I think you could easily do it in two days if you really wanted to rush through it. But three days I found was really nice. It gave us time to relax at the beach. It gave us time to really enjoy the atmosphere, check out the music and watch the sunsets and enjoy the great Greek food. Yeah, so if you are looking for a place to spend a couple days uh, before you do get on the water, we highly recommend Old Corfu Town. And if you enjoyed our video, make sure that you subscribe and click on that bell so that you get notifications because we put up new travel videos each week giving you tips, advice, and inspiration from around the world. Thanks for watching.